Hey guys, Barbara here. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Let's make choco flan. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Hello to my mother. Hi, the body. She's not shy, okay? <laughs> I guess Mario Ramirez from... Box 11. <laughs> you are on The Bear Pantry Show <laughs> in Utah. Every Sunday, potato salad, stewed chicken, rice and beans, and plantains. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Yeah. You're watching the Bear Pantry Show with my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't even know this cake existed until I went to my sister for Mother's Day, and one of her friends uh, saw that I had put up the video with the flan, and so she suggested that I make impossible cake. So I asked her what it was. She said that it was a chocolate cake mixed with the flan, but it does some type of magic when you bake it. So of course I was intrigued. Came home, did my research. I looked at a lot of videos. A lot of them call for box cakes, you know, like just go pick up a box cake from the store. But I didn't want to do that. And I couldn't use my chocolate cake that I have in the pantry as a box cake because it, the batter is too thin. So I soon realized you need a pretty thick batter to do this. So I did a lot of research, put a lot of different recipes together. So I have a Frankenstein of a recipe here and we're going to try it. Okay. This is my first time trying it on camera and let the chips fall where they may. So let's get um, started right away with the ingredients that we're going to need. This is for the chocolate cake, a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, one cup of baking cocoa, one tablespoon of baking powder, a cup and a half of sugar, four eggs, half a cup of regular milk, and half cup of vegetable oil. For the flan, I've measured three quarters cup of this heavy cream to this measuring cup. To that, I'm gonna add three quarters cup of the evaporated milk, and then I'm gonna use the whole can of the condensed milk, five eggs, and two teaspoons of vanilla. We're also gonna need the blender, and a bun pan like this that's greased, all right? Let me preheat the oven to 350, and let's get started with the caramel topping. So this is 2 thirds cup of regular white sugar, and to this, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of water. I think for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and write the ingredients in the description too, okay? So we're just gonna let this brown. We're not gonna stir it with any type of spoon. We're just gonna do this to it, and let it go here on this medium heat for about seven to eight minutes until it's brown. Let's take care of the cake, the chocolate cake. So I'm adding my flour, the baking cocoa, and salt. I forgot to tell you guys, add half a teaspoon of salt because I'm not using butter, the baking powder, and the sugar. You don't have to sift the sugar, but hey, we already have this trainer here, so why not just get this done, all right? Now remember, when I use butter, I use salted butter, and so that's why I don't add salt to some of my cakes when I'm using butter, but this one doesn't call for butter. That's why I opted uh, to add the salt, all right? So just let me go ahead and get this whisked. And then, oh, I stopped just now to check on my caramel, all right? <laughs> so let me pour the caramel in my pan. And you can use, you can spray, you know, stuff to, to grease the pan. But don't flour it, okay? Just grease it. I've, I've used butter. So let me swirl this around. And it's so hot that it's not even sticking. <laughs> in my pan but it's okay let me set this aside and work on my wet ingredients for this cake y'all so first let me put my eggs four eggs the whole eggs all right and let me whisk this first so i can make sure all the egg yolks are well incorporated to this let me add my oil half a cup of vegetable oil and i'm just using canola oil half a cup of regular milk all right not evap just regular milk now to this I'm going to be adding my dry ingredients. I love these type of cakes where you don't have to cream the butter and the sugar first. This is just mix all the dry together, mix all the wet together, and then just inco incorporate them well. So let me go ahead and work this in with my little whisk here. Let me add the rest of this. So I think this is going to be a very dense chocolate cake, all right? I think it has to be dense to withstand the flan sitting on top. So just let me go ahead and get this worked in and then I'm going to switch out to a, um, a spatula in a little while. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. I like the thickness of this batter. Let me speed it up for you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's mixed in well. It kind of looks like a brownie batter, the way how uh, it's so thick. Now here I'm with my spatula and pretty much the chocolate cake part of the choco flan is almost ready for us to pour into the pan, all right? 
I'm just checking to make sure there are no dry spots. So pour it in very carefully. You don't want to mess up the, the middle part, the cone part of the pan. But if you mess it, it's okay. All right, nothing has to be perfect. Let me get all of it in here. And this cake is called um, a magic cake by some people because uh, during the baking, something magic happens to where this chocolate cake part of it will switch places with the flan in the baking. It's amazing. I saw somebody show it on YouTube and it was amazing. So now I'm adding my 3 fourths cup of evap milk to the cup. So we want to get to one and three quarters cup here, or one and a half actually, because it's three quarter plus three quarter. Let me get my condensed milk open. And then we're going to use this whole can. I am certainly making a mess today, you guys. I think because I have no help with the cameras, I have it on the stand and I'm just working by myself. <laughs> so let me mix my condensed milk. I really need to buy a blender. Ever since I took back the Blendtec when it was catching fire, I didn't buy a blender. I just have the Nutribullet and it's kind of too small to do these type of activities. So I can't put all the eggs in at once because I think it's going to overflow. Uh, the oven is ready for me. So th let me go ahead and blend. And all I'm doing right here is just pouring some of this out into something else because I just don't have the space to fit it all. And here I am making a mess again. Let me get the rest of my egg yolks in here. Blend everything well. And you don't have to blend for too long. As long as it's all mixed up, you know, well incorporated. And I'm going to strain it. I've seen a few videos where people have strained it and I think I like that because it looks very smooth. So just let me go ahead and start pouring on top of the chocolate cake batter and because the chocolate cake batter is so thick, um, this flan is not penetrating through. It's just going to sit on top. Let me get the rest. I just have it all in different containers. That's why I'm pouring a little bit at a time. Okay, but we're going to use the whole thing that we mixed up. See. And I have it in this bigger pan because you know we're going to bake it in a hot water bath. So let me stick this in the oven. The water's not in it yet. I've boiled some water in my little kettle. And I'm just going to pour this to about an inch tall. So yeah, this is coming along pretty nicely. It, it's moving pretty quickly too. It's not taking a lot of time to make this at all. So um, I decided... I'm going to start with 90 minutes, an hour and a half to see, you know, how this cake is coming along. And I've decided I'm going to cover it with some aluminum foil. The recipe calls for a lot of eggs, right? But in a sense, we're making two cakes. The chocolate cake called for four eggs and the flan called for five. You can get away with using four eggs for the flan, but don't use less than that, okay? Because it's not gonna jiggle if you use less. You guys know how I am when it comes to even my beliefs in bread pudding. I like to have a lot of eggs in it because I want it to be jiggly, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So I'm gonna let that go for an hour and a half. I did end up putting the aluminum foil on top because I've seen some people bake it like that. But I think at about an hour when I check on it, I'll leave the foil off. We'll see, we'll make the decision then, okay? So in the meanwhile, I'm gonna clean up all this mess, go take a rest, and then when I come back, I'm gonna show you guys how the cake looks from the oven, okay? But remember, this is a two-day thing, so we're not gonna be um, inverting and unmolding this cake today. We're gonna do it tomorrow. But at least you're gonna see what it looks like fresh from the oven. I removed the aluminum foil at the one hour mark, and now it's 90 minutes in, and I'm checking my skewer, and it's still not clean enough, so what I'm gonna do is just cover it back up loosely. The water in the pan is still enough, so I haven't added any more. Let me go ahead and set the timer for another 15 minutes. Look at it guys, one hour and 45 minutes. I'm just gonna let it sit here and cool for a while. Here it is guys. It's been cooling for about an hour and a half and it's still warm. When it's completely cooled, I'm gonna stick it in the fridge. I can see why they want you to put the foil on top because if you don't, the cake's gonna get kind of hard. So I, put, I took the foil off for about 15 minutes at about the hour's mark. And then when I realized what was gonna happen, I went and put it back on, okay? So everything looks pretty decent so far, but I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow morning sometime when I'm gonna invert this and unmold it, okay? I can't wait to see how this comes out. This is too early the next day, almost nine o'clock in the morning. Take a look at what I did. Took the cake from the fridge. And by the way, when I put it in the fridge, I covered it up, okay? 
put it in some hot water from the faucet to just make it loosen up. I went with a little knife in here to loosen it from here and around the edges. And now we're gonna try to invert and unmold. Let me get it from the water first. There. Just don't wanna wet my thing. Or you could use a plate, you know? But I have this pretty cake thing my mom gave me. Just be patient with it, guys. <laughs> that is gorgeous! Yes! It took about an hour and 45 minutes to bake the cake. I did set the timer for 90 minutes, but when I checked on it, the skewer didn't come out clean. So I put it back in and let it go for another 15 minutes at 350. So I would suggest that you guys do the same when you're making yours. Set it for 90 minutes first and then check on it because you know, some ovens are a little bit different. I wanna give a special shout out to my sponsors. I wanna thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart because your donations help me to do these type of recipes because nine eggs in one recipe is a lot, all right? That's almost a whole dozen and you guys know that eggs can get very very expensive so thank you so much and I pray a harvest back to you swiftly all right let me go ahead and promote my books this is my cookbook beans and rice in Jesus Christ I have not promoted this in a while but I want you guys to know that you can pick this up at my website bearpantryshow.com you can also pick up Jada's book and then I have a few more items there so I don't bug you guys all the time about it but stop on my website I am accessible my phone numbers at my website you know an address where you can reach me and I really and truly look forward to communicating with you guys so I'd like it to ask you to go ahead and put some type of comment to let me know how you like the recipe how you like the video share it for me on all your social media platforms uh, sugar one of my viewers sugar I want to thank you for always sharing the video every time I put a video out you share it for me thank you so much because that helps a whole lot that's a that's a form of sponsorship also okay sugar and um, give it a thumbs up that helps a whole lot and like I said comment and don't forget to subscribe all right um, I'm gonna see you guys next video which is on coming up on Monday and now it's just a matter of time to taste I'll see you guys soon Hey guys, if you like what you see here, you may like my vlog channel. Head on over to youtube.com forward slash dabsbearcom to get caught up on what's going on behind the scenes of the cooking channel, what's coming up next, and what's going on in my daily life.